All right, welcome back. So I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different here. Essentially, the Chinese upper division uh, obviously started just a few days ago. And as I was going through watching all of those games, I kind of, it kind of dawned on me that I totally forgot about the Chinese region and all the changes that had taken place back when uh, everyone was moving around, you know, the post TI roster shuffle, all that stuff. It has been over a month now since that period has ended. We obviously haven't seen any Chinese teams. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of go through, uh, take a look at all of the rosters in this Chinese upper division. Uh, just give a little uh, brief look at it again, uh, just to kind of refresh our memories. It definitely helps me because again, I was watching the replays and I was like, oh yeah that's not the same team it was last year at all it's completely different so anyways uh if this is up your alley uh feel free to like subscribe share all that fun stuff join the discord if you're at all curious about talking all things dpc with other people just like yourself who like these videos and uh yeah jumping right into it starting off with aster um they had some pretty minimal changes to their roster uh they bring in ori from vg gaming to fill in the slot that uh, White Album left. Well, obviously, he didn't leave them. They put White Album down onto their B team, Aster Aries, who unfortunately is not going to be getting bumped up to the upper division this year. Uh, they were first place at one point in the division, and they kind of had a rough cu last couple weeks. Um, but regardless, they bring Ori in for VG Gaming, which I think is huge. Ori had a really, really solid season last year with VG Gaming. And then Siamese Cat bringing them up from their B team that they just sent a uh, white album down to. And then finally moving Lonham uh, from the five position to the coaching position. So technically, uh, he's not a player anymore. He was previously on Aster's roster, but he's just moving to coach. So uh, overall, not a whole lot of changes for Aster. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. I think bringing in Ori is going to be huge. Uh, although losing a player like White Album, who sure may not be the most consistent player when he was on it, he was pretty damn solid. Uh, now looking at Ehome, completely opposite to uh, Aster here, uh, they changed their entire roster. In fact, heading into the uh, post-TI roster shuffle period, they took their uh, entire roster from last year and they put them all on the inactive squad, in addition with the other players they already had in their inactive squad. So they had like nine players on their inactive squad, uh, just so that no matter what, if they just didn't have enough players to complete their roster, they could just pull more players back in. So they were like playing with more cards in their hand, essentially. But they do end up with an entirely new roster, most of which being from the Phoenix team uh, that did very well in the lower division last year and are now in the upper division. Uh, speaking of, we have Shiro, uh, 7E, Planet, and ZZQ all coming in from Phoenix previously. We then have Zeal coming in from Team Ents, uh, which is not a team I'm familiar with. It was definitely not in the DPC. Uh, and then QQQ, who uh, has been coaching for eHome for the past little while, although it has said that he w it had it marked on Liquipedia that he was coaching for VG Gaming uh, from late August until late November, which means around when they were at TI. Uh, but he's still on eHome. He's always been a part of eHome, even though he was helping out VG Gaming during TI. Uh, for Invictus Gaming, very minimal changes. Um, they only lose Kaka in the offseason. That is, of course, because Kaka's contract expired and he kind of walked away from the team a little bit. Uh, he did join a team that was very similar in essence to the CIS Rejects team we see in Eastern Europe, where it was a bunch of uh, big name Chinese players that didn't end up on a team this year that kind of wanted to see if they could make it in the open qualifiers. Unfortunately, they didn't make it through the open qualifiers, so we won't be seeing any of Kaka in this first tour. But uh, they pick up Fade from Ehome. All in all, Invictus still pretty much the same team they had last season, which was one of the best of the world. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can maintain that stature. It's a very high bar to reach, but again, with minimal changes, they should be able to achieve that. Uh, moving now on to LBZS. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm moving through this list alphabetically. These, are, these teams are in no particular order. Um, we have Kagomi coming in from Team Sirius, and all of the teams written in red, it might be a little hard to differentiate, but if there's a team written in red as opposed to pink, that means that that team was not a part of the DPC, or they were uh, a part of that team before the current DPC system was put in place. So for the most part of this LBZS roster, uh, that's the case. These guys have not played since either the start of this new system, or they just have not been in this DPC system before. Uh, so Kagomi and Detachment coming in from Team Sirius, which they haven't played on in a while. Molasses coming in from Phoenix. So he, of course, being the only member from all these Phoenix players that has yet to come in. Uh, we then have uh, Kat Yu, who is actually sticking with the team. He's the only remaining member from this stack coming in from the lower division. And then finally, we have PU playing mid, coming in from Team Dragon, which just like Team Sirius, was not a part of the DBC at any point. He has not been a part of this DPC yet. 
Uh, moving on to Team Phoenix now, the other team coming in from the lower division, who clearly has had their entire roster poached at this point, mostly by Ehome. Uh, we have M77 coming in from You Know Who. Uh, we have Zone, who has actually not been a part of any pro team from what I can find, at least on Liquipedia. This is going to be his first ever time playing on a pro team, and let alone that, it's going to be in the upper division of China, which is one of the most competitive regions in all of Dota. Uh, we have YP. Uh, sorry, Shining coming in from Team Eclipse, YP coming in from Team Ever, and then LWW coming in from Team Sirius as well. Same thing as Kaigomi and Detachment over there. So all in all, every single player on this list has not been a part of this DPC system, has not played on a Tier 1 or Tier 2 even uh, Chinese Dota 2 team. So the success rate of Phoenix might be a little lower than some of the others in this group. I made a prediction video and I had them uh, pretty low in China. I think LBZS should have a little bit of a better time overall, but regardless, uh, their only remaining member being Mikasa. So if he's able to kind of rekindle the fire that was there in the last season with the last stack that made it to the upper division, who knows, maybe they can end up doing pretty well. Again, this region was shaken up quite a lot, just like Western Europe. And we've seen just how crazy Western Europe has been in just the first three weeks. So uh, again, I'm not trying to underrate any team here specifically. Uh, PSG LGD, they didn't make any changes to the roster. Uh, even Jalba who had a controversy regarding uh, betting on his own matches. Uh, he has been found not guilty for that, so he is going to be coming back. Uh, so no changes to PSG LGD here. Um, I just figured I'd put the roster up there so that you guys could re refresh your memory just in case you forgot. Uh, they have Ame, nothing to say, Faith Beyond, Jin Q, and Y, aka Innocence, and again, Xiaoba uh, coming into coach. Uh, for RNG, we have God King sticking with the team from last season. Uh, of course, RNG had a pretty rough time in the upper division last year, uh, but because Elephant gave them their slot, they are still in the upper division now. So he's looking for a bit of a bounce back. Same thing for Felix Jalba. Uh, he is also sticking around from the last stack RNG had. But coming in from Elephant, we have Som that's coming to play mid. Uh, of course, Elephant was a bit of a dumpster fire uh, in the sense that they had such an amazing stack of players on that team, but it just never really came together. Um, so he's looking for a bit of a bounce back there as well. And then Chalice and Xnova coming in from Ehome. Of course, people know them more, uh, probably know them more from the old PSG LGD than they do the last Ehome, especially since Ehome had a pretty rough time last season. So pretty much every single player on this roster had a pretty down year last year and are looking for a bounce back. So I'm hoping this means that there's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of fight back in this team. I'm hoping that these guys are just really looking for vengeance and they aren't a team that's just kind of kind of crumble under the pressure and under the uh, underperforming that they've been doing uh, or that they've been having for the past year. And finally, Vici Gaming, an unfortunate, uh, an unfortunately large amount of changes to Vici Gaming's roster after such a good uh, time last year. They lose both of their supports, they lose their offlaner, they lose their mid laner Ori, who goes over to Aster, the only remaining member being Payoyo, so there's at least that. Uh, but coming in from E-Home, we have XM coming in to play the mid lane. Uh, we have Irving coming in from LBZS, who again did very well in the lower division last year, but we will have to see how they'll do in the upper division here. And then YDS and Victoria coming in from CDEC, who again uh, did not have a very good time last season. I believe they finished bottom two in the upper division, and now actually they're out of the DPC. They finished bottom two in the lower division. So uh, these guys are looking to have a bit of a bounce back season as well. And then finally coming into coach for them, they have Lycas from CDEC. However, this is not the same era of CDEC when he was a part of the team. Uh, the last time he was a part of CDEC was before this current DPC format. So uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I thought this would be kind of nice to go over and give you guys a brief refresher on all the changes that have been made, where all the players are coming from, because again, I was kind of uh, hit with a bit of a surprise when I was watching the games and I was like, oh, right, yeah, Vici Gaming isn't the same team at all anymore. Or, oh, yeah, uh, they made some changes to eHome pretty much completely. There's like... There's literally like four completely brand new teams, and then there's one team that's like half changed, that's Aster, and then like PSG LGD and Invictus are like the only teams that have pretty much not changed anything at all. So anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow with some more regular content. Hopefully the Dota's good for you guys. I've been having a blast watching this season.